I want to explore a question with you. How do we turn not knowing into an asset? How do we turn our vulnerabilities into strengths? There was a Talmud professor who was truly exceptional. He was the creme de la creme of scholars. Name a text or halakha, and he would not only know what you were referring to, but he could bring in an additional five texts to supplement the conversation. One day, one of the professor's students said to him, you are so learned. You know everything there is to know about Talmud. However, there is one thing I know that you don't. Naturally, the professor was intrigued. What are you talking about? He asked. The student responded, the one thing I know that you don't is what it is like not to know. Every person has come to exist in their own limited method of communication influenced by ideology and bias. I feel that way when I talk to someone whose lifestyle or beliefs contradicts my understanding of the world and the language that I use to describe it. I either try to translate with clunky word equivalencies or I fire back in my own language, unaware that to the other, I may as well be speaking Greek. Which is why I find it kind of terrifying how if every Jew just decided to forget, decided not to mark that box, not to share that part of ourselves, we do their job for them. The Shoah, Iranian Revolution, a rising anti-Semitism led our families to flee their homes, taking with them their valuables, material, and in the form of memories. Now we live in a nation where each one of us has a different story, each of us holds lifetimes of memories, and it is our responsibility to keep it alive in the present and pass it down for the future. It may be too late to ask for us all to speak the same language again, but to listen and try to understand, we can build bridges where there once were chasms and schisms. And perhaps like Garcia Marquez, when we see our ideas and words reflected by other people, we will find them more beautiful and more poignant than our own. It took my entire high school experience to recognize that progress is only achieved when my ideas are filtered through the language, the perspective of another person. Israeli poet Yehuda Amichai expresses the value of pluralism with a notable succinctness and simplicity. He writes, from the place we are right, flowers will never grow in the spring. The place we are right is hard and trampled like a yard. But doubts and loves dig up the world like a mole, like a plow. Achshav, shanachnu rochim le universita, anachnu nire kol kach harbe de od shonot shanachnu lo naskimita. Az. Search for the people that challenge you and make you better. Don't settle for those who agree with you, who reinforce a single truth. Remember the incredible gift of your time at Milken. Remember what it was like to live and learn alongside others so different from you. Resist the pull to the place you are right and commit instead to pluralism and growth, your own, your communities, and that of the generations to come. As I stand here about to graduate, I look upon a community of people, all with beautiful, unique, and complex identities, each with their own traditions, values, and stories. And it is our Judaism that brought us here, binds us together, guides our future, and makes us who we are. Thank you.